Welcome to Audit the Audit, where we sort out the who and what and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers vehicle searches, planting evidence, and roadside chemical tests, and is brought to us by USA Today. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. Before we dive into the interaction, I want to give a big thanks to the sponsor of this episode, the Commuter 2 speaker from Cove. I've been using the Commuter 2 for years now, and between its amazing sound quality, ease of use, and small form factor, there is no need for any other speaker. The Commuter can last for seven hours on a single charge. It has a water-resistant rating of IPX7 and has a built-in microphone for taking calls. But best of all, the commuter splits into two speakers, giving you full stereo audio. <laughs> While connected, the commuter speakers offer a 360 surround sound effect, and when separated, the speakers convert into left and right stereo channels, which makes it perfect for taking on a trip or connecting to your laptop at home. The Commuter 2 is now available in a ton of different colors to match whatever outfit or environment you're listening in. Right now, Cove is offering members of the ATA community a 67% discount when you use code AA67 at checkout, or click on the link in the description. This discount is only valid for one month, so click the link before it's too late. Thanks again to Cove for sponsoring this episode. On February 15th, 2018, at approximately 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Deputy Zach Wester of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office pulled over 52-year-old grandmother Teresa Odom in Mariana, Florida, because her vehicle brake lights were allegedly flickering on and off at a fast pace. At the time of the stop, Ms. Odom was on felony probation for dealing in stolen property. After Ms. Odom was pulled over, Deputy Wester approached the driver's side window of Ms. Odom's vehicle. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Should I turn in here to get off? You're fine. Uh, You're fine. Uh, Deputy uh, Westwood, Jackson uh, County Sheriff's uh, Office. Uh, Reason for my stop is um, your brake lights. Yes, sir. They work one minute, and the next minute they don't work, and then a few seconds later they just flash. Okay, I think so. It's probably because of the rain. Okay, that's fine. You got your driver's license yes, on you, ma'am? I just got tickets the other day. I'll be glad to show oh, them you. Oh, did you? <laughs> no, you're fine. All right, thank you. I'll be right back. Uh, my truck may or may not start. When I turn it off, you may have to push me off, so I'm going to go okay. ahead and see. Okay. Uh, do you need to turn it off? Do you have to turn it off? It'd be probably better. Okay. I'm going to uh, hard time with it as it is. Okay. I'll, I'll tell you what. Can if we I can... answer my phone? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can answer your phone. I'm just trying to think what's going to be best for, uh, what is, I mean, it... what is that right there? What is what? That right there. What is what? This? That straw right there. This is not a straw. It's an ink pen. Oh, okay. It's okay. An it, it was connected. It looked like it was no connected sure. to that arc. Just hey, hang tight, okay? Hey, you see my hip give out right then? Good Lord. Luke, Luke, all right. You just don't even need to know. <laughs> I've been at the hospital with oh, an 84 year old uncle all mm. day long for three days. Okay. Now, so I'm expecting anything I, at this I, point. That would be, yeah, I, I hope everything turns out good with that, all right? It did. Uh, it, it did. Oh, Lord, I'm sorry. And I'm waiting on Dr. Albrecht to call me. That was another thing I was supposed to tell okay. you. Dr. Albrecht calls That's me fine. to answer his call. That, yeah, that ain't no problem. I don't, I don't care. Yeah, I'm not going to keep you from talking on the phone, okay? Um, anything in the vehicle I need to be concerned about? Bombs, hand grenades, Drugs, rocket launchers? No. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. Not. Okay, all right. Um, Here's what I do probably 10 or 15 times a shift, okay? Um, there's going to be a K9 coming in a minute, and she's going to walk around the car, okay? But instead of doing that, would you consent to a search of your vehicle? No, You're fine with that? Okay. <laughs> Art, you mind stepping out and just hanging out with this deputy right back here? No, I don't. I just, I'm scared of being in this traffic. To be no, I, Deputy Hey K will take care of you. Deputy Wester informs Ms. Odom that a canine unit is on the way and requests that she consent to a search of her vehicle instead of waiting for the canine. Despite the fact that she was under no legal obligation to do so, Ms. Odom readily agrees to allow Deputy Wester to search her vehicle. In general, while officers are not prohibited from requesting to search a citizen's home, vehicle, or person, individuals have the right to refuse to consent. However, if an individual consents, officers have the authority to conduct a search, even if there is no probable cause, reason reasonable suspicion, or any justification whatsoever for the search. For this reason, criminal defense attorneys recommend that individuals refuse to consent to any search that an officer requests permission to conduct, because if an officer asks for consent to search, they typically do not have the legal authority to conduct the search without permission. It is also important to note that a court would almost certainly conclude that Deputy Wester did not have the reasonable suspicion necessary to detain Ms. Odom to wait for the canine unit to arrive. In the 2015 case of Rodriguez v. United States, the Supreme Court held that extending the duration of a traffic stop beyond the time reasonably required to complete the mission of the stop to wait for a canine unit to arrive and complete a dog sniff of the vehicle violated the Fourth Amendment. 
The court explained that, quote, an officer may conduct certain unrelated checks during an otherwise lawful traffic stop, but he may not do so in a way that prolongs the stop, absent the reasonable suspicion ordinarily demanded to justify detaining an individual. Here, Deputy Wester had absolutely no evidence that Ms. Odom was involved in criminal drug activity, so a court would likely decide that there was no reasonable suspicion to warrant detaining Ms. Odom to wait for the canine unit. Or, Deputy Haykid, make sure you don't get run over, okay? Because um, I have faith that he would I'm prefer really to get, to get over. <laughs> All right, just hang tight, myself. Here, the body cam footage video shows what appears to be a small baggie in Deputy Wester's hand as he puts on his gloves. It was later proven that Deputy Wester planted methamphetamine in Ms. Odom's vehicle. Although there are no statutes in Florida that explicitly prohibit police officers from planting drugs, doing so in order to falsify charges against an individual violates many different state laws. For instance, Section 838.022 of the Florida Statutes, which defines the offense of official misconduct, states that, quote, It is unlawful for a public servant to knowingly and intentionally obtain a benefit for any person, or to cause unlawful harm to another by falsifying any official record or official document. So, if Deputy Wester included information about planted drugs in a police report or another official document, he could be found guilty of official misconduct. Similarly, Section 918.13 of the Florida Statutes, which outlines the crime of fabricating evidence, states that, quote, No person, knowing that an investigation by a duly constituted law enforcement agency of this state is pending or is about to be instituted, shall make, present, or use any record, document or thing, knowing it to be false. Therefore, Deputy Wester could violate this statute by presenting planted drugs as evidence against Ms. Odom, or including a false narrative in a police report. And, of course, Deputy Wester also likely illegally possessed the drugs that he planted, in violation of Section 893-13 of the Florida Statutes. Although planting drugs or other evidence is highly unethical and illegal behavior, some police officers do engage in such conduct, and individuals who are the victims of planted evidence often feel powerless to fight the charges against them when it's their word against a corrupt officers. However, public defenders and criminal defense lawyers can help citizens who are charged with crimes based on planted evidence defend themselves, so individuals should never plead guilty to criminal charges without first consulting an attorney. After planting the evidence in Ms. Odom's vehicle, Deputy Wester confronts her about the substance. Miss Odom. It is yogurt, sir. I know. Okay. It's how, yogurt. How about it's this, sir? That is not mine. No, sir. Okay. I'm not going to ask you any no, questions. No, sir. Hold on. I'm not going to ask you any direct um, questions. I'm going to read you your rights first, okay? So just hang out with Deputy Hake here. What is it? I have an idea. We're going to test it, though, okay? I don't know. Oh, no, Teresa, you're going to jail. Do what? Okay. Okay. What it is? Uh, yeah, there it goes. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Jess. No, I'm, uh, 
Do you have anything on you, Miss Hodel? I said I didn't have anything on me in the truck. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But do you have anything on your person? Is what I I'm have asking. Nothing on me, to my knowledge. Okay. At Thank all. you. We're good. Okay. All right. And I'm not trying to be ugly. It, it did return presumptive positive for methamphetamine. Okay. I'm just letting you know. Okay. Deputy Wester conducts a field chemical test on the planted substance and informs Ms. Odom that the test was presumptive positive for methamphetamine. According to a feature in the New York Times, there are many factors that can impact the results of a roadside field test. For instance, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement reports that 21% of substances submitted to its labs as methamphetamine were not methamphetamine, and half of the false positives were not even illegal drugs. In fact, in the first seven months of 2014 alone, the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office in Florida reported 15 false positives for methamphetamine after deputies misunderstood which colors indicated a positive result. Environmental factors can also interfere with the field test, with cold weather slowing the development of color results and heat speeding it up. And lighting conditions on the street can prevent officers from accurately determining the color of the results strip. These issues are not limited to methamphetamine tests, as a common field test for cocaine uses a chemical called cobalt thiocyanate, which turns blue when exposed to cocaine, as well as over 80 other chemical compounds, including acne medications, common household cleaners, and methadone. Although field chemical testing is too unreliable to be used as evidence in court, it can be used to obtain probable cause to arrest individuals found with substances in their possession. However, because the vast majority of drug cases in the United States are resolved through plea bargains, prosecutors often accept guilty or no contest pleas before more accurate lab testing is conducted on the purportedly illegal substances. In other words, despite the fact that field drug tests are not admissible as evidence, a large proportion of drug convictions are based solely on the results of these tests. However, it should be noted that the results of the test Deputy Webster conducted were not a false positive, since Deputy Webster actually did plant methamphetamine in Ms. Odom's vehicle. Um, what about my truck? I'm going to have to tow it, okay, since it's a narcotics felony arrest, okay? They saying they're going to tow my truck, baby. Yeah. All right. Here, you just want to put your phone and your sunglasses in your purse here, and we'll make sure all this gets to the jail. Ms. Odom was placed under arrest and charged with felony counts of methamphetamine possession and drug paraphernalia. She was held in jail for 19 days and then pled no contest to the charges. Ms. Odom later explained why she didn't fight the charges, stating the quote, I just didn't think I'd be able to beat anything, being as it was law enforcement, and I wanted to get home and take care of my grandbaby. She was about to be three months old. In August 2018, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement initiated an investigation into Deputy Wester's conduct at the request of the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. Deputy Wester was placed on administrative leave on August 1, 2018, and fired on September 10th. The Department of Law Enforcement's investigation found that Deputy Wester routinely pulled over citizens for minor traffic infractions, planted drugs inside their vehicles, and arrested them. In response to these allegations, prosecutors reviewed almost 300 cases in which former Deputy Wester was involved, and dropped charges and vacated convictions in over 100 of those cases. Ms. Odom was among those found to be affected, and on September 18, 2018, her convictions were vacated and the charges against her were dismissed. On July 10, 2019, Mr. Wester was arrested on numerous felony and misdemeanor charges, and on May 18, 2021, a jury found Mr. Wester guilty of 19 out of the 67 charges against him, and he was eventually convicted of 12 felonies. On July 13, 2021, Mr. Wester was sentenced to 12 and a half years in state prison for these convictions. Mr. Wester has since filed an appeal, and as of the date of this episode, the appellate case is still pending. Over a dozen of Mr. Wester's victims have filed civil rights lawsuits over his misconduct, and on July 25, 2019, Ms. Odom filed a federal lawsuit against Mr. Wester. As of the date of this episode, her case is also still pending. Overall, former Deputy Wester gets an F for displaying a total lack of compassion and empathy for Ms. Odom and his other victims, maliciously neglecting his duty as a member of law enforcement, and for abusing his policing authority and intentionally jailing innocent citizens. This interaction largely speaks for itself. And it goes without saying that Mr. Wester's conduct was nothing short of cruel and criminal. Although an exact motive was never established, evidence was presented that suggested that Mr. Wester wanted to secure a position on his department's drug task force, which his father, Robert Wester, had 
had ran for approximately 15 years. Again, this motive has not been proven beyond a reasonable doubt, but if true, it demonstrates the lengths that Mr. Wester was willing to go in an effort to advance his own career at the expense of innocent citizens. Ironically enough, several of Mr. Wester's victims reported him telling them to, quote, be careful who you have around, and, quote, a lot of people you think you can trust, you can't. This is yet another officer that deserves a grade lower than an F. And this interaction highlights the important role that independent verification plays in police encounters. As for Ms. Odom, it would not be appropriate to assign a grade to an individual who was purely a victim of misconduct and not in control of any aspect of the encounter. There is no doubt that Ms. Odom should not have given the deputy permission to search her vehicle. But considering that Mr. Wester demonstrated a complete disregard for the law, it's difficult to see how the interaction would have been any different otherwise. If Ms. Odom had refused consent, then Mr. Wester would have likely waited for a canine unit, despite the Rodriguez ruling, and then planted false evidence anyway. Ms. Odom was faced with an impossibly difficult and emotionally traumatizing situation, as were the rest of Mr. Wester's victims. But she somehow managed to stay calm, compliant, and respectful while being falsely accused of felony crimes. I commend Ms. Odom for maintaining her composure and for following up this encounter with the proper legal action. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal topic you would like us to discuss in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out my second channel for even more police interaction content.